Let's bring, let's bring in right now Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma. Congressman, always great to have you with us here. Uh, we've been talking all morning about the president's uh, poll numbers and his low poll numbers. You and I both know nothing succeeds like success. So that being the case, legislatively, what does the Republican Party need to do when everybody gets back into town to show some mo forward momentum that might help the president, might help the party? Well, it's got a, a big agenda in September. It needs to pass the budget that's come out of committee with a unanimous Republican vote. Finish the eight remaining appropriations bills. They're all out of committee. Four of them were across the floor in the final week. The other eight need to go. Need to negotiate a successful bipartisan deal on the debt ceiling. And uh, most of all, need to focus on tax reform going forward. The legislation needs to be introduced in September so we can really see what we're talking about. We're moving in that direction. We had a, a good release of joint principles. But you've got to see the legislative text. And then we need to get that across the finish line by the end of the year. So if you, if you get your business done and you check out the list of those first three things, which is, you know, passing the budget, passing appropriation bills, passing a debt ceiling, uh, raising the debt ceiling, the, the basics that you really need to do just to get your business done in a way that Harry Reid and the Democrats didn't do in the Senate for so many years, then you move on to tax reform. And let's talk about that for a second. What parts of tax reform? Uh, would help your constituents uh, that, that, that you could take back to your constituents in October, November and say, this is what I've done for you. This is what Republicans have done for you. This is how we've made a difference in a way that Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Congress would not have made a difference. Well, several things. First of all, uh, lowering the or reducing the number of brackets from seven to, let's say, three, lowering the top rate. Uh, lowering the uh, corporate business tax, particularly for small businesses, uh, putting us uh, on a territorial tax system where, frankly, uh, we don't double tax American profits earned overseas, so there's an incentive to actually bring them back here. And finally, simplifying the code so that most people really could uh, fill out their tax reform on, on a big postcard, or something like that. Those would be the sorts of things that would really matter to my constituents. Good morning, Congressman. Rick Tyler from New York has a question. Rick? Yeah, Rick Tyler. Good morning, Congressman. Uh, Debbie hey, Stabenow Rick. has introduced. I, I health care for a minute. Debbie Stabenow has introduced a bill called the Medicare Act of 55, which would ostensibly take the highest risk, risk pool in the private market and put it into the Medicare market, making it the lowest risk pool in the Medicare market as a way to uh, get uh, pressures off of premiums. Could you support something like that? Well, I haven't seen the senator's bill, to be fair, but uh, count me as skeptical about anything that uh, expands Medicare right now, simply because the system's going broke. We ought to fix the one we have. I mean, everybody in America pays Medicare taxes once you go to work. Only people over 65 actually get the benefit, and, and right. we still are not uh, properly financing but it. Her, so her bill until I saw what taxes she was talking about, her, it'd be her tough bill for me to know. I probably should have pointed out would, it would be optional, and it would require people who want to opt into the Medicare to pay premiums, she says saving them about well thousands of dollars a year over a private insurance market. Well, I, saving them money is important and, and a, a good goal to have. But you also, if you're putting more people on the Titanic, you just sink the ship faster. So I'd want to see what she's doing overall to improve the solvency of the system. Because, again, before we expand the system, we ought to make sure that the people that are actually getting their benefits now uh, can be certain those benefits are going to continue to come. And right now, according to the actuaries, that's just not the case. I mean, we're running risk in all three of these big systems, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicare are all slowly going bankrupt. So I'd like to see a lot more focus on making them stable before we talk about expanding them. Congressman Sam Stein here. Uh, one thing you will have to do uh, as a member of the House is vote on whether to raise the debt ceiling come the end of September. A yes or no question, will the House of Representatives pass a clean debt ceiling hike? Probably not clean. Uh, most Republicans want to do something to lower the trajectory of the debt. I mean, a clean debt ceiling...
A hike is like having a credit card and saying, I've reached my limit. I'm just going to change the limit higher without changing any of my spending habits. That's a tough sell to Republicans. Democrats seem to be fine with that, but I think most of my colleagues aren't. So you know, the, the we'll administration has asked, the administration itself, the Trump administration has asked for Of course for they do. What, what, administration, yeah. what administration doesn't ask for that? So you will, I mean, you're, fine defying the, you're, defined, you're fine defying the, you're fine defying the Trump administration's request for a clean debt hike. Well, I, I certainly would listen to any argument the president made, but no, I much prefer uh, to do something. And we've done that in the past, by the way, uh, yeah. where we actually do something to lower the debt and deficit long term. It's not doesn't have to be dollar for dollar, but you have to show some progress here. This idea we can go on spending interminably uh, and just simply raise the debt ceiling every time. Sooner or later, the credit markets are going to make that impossible to do. So let's reassure them and show that we're serious about lowering the deficits and eventually Eventually, the long-term debt. Congressman Elise Jordan here. President Trump wasn't exactly happy about the sanctions bill that you helped play a role getting past sanctioning Russia, North Korea, Iran, and he said that Congress has done more to poison relations with Russia um, than at any other time in recent memory. What do you have to say about that? Well, obviously, I disagree with the president. Look, the, the culprit here is Putin and Russian activity around the world. Uh, they're destabilizing democracies, attempted to do that to our own. Uh, they're literally physically invading other countries, you know, obviously Crimea, part of the Ukraine. They're active in Georgia. Uh, they have been a destabilizing force in Syria, uh, cooperating with a brutal regime. So the Russians have brought this on themselves. And I think Congress is right to say, look, we have a role in this, too. Uh, we're a co-equal branch of government. When you meddle in uh, the, the elections of our country, you meddle in our elections as well. So I think uh, that's where the blame uh, belongs. And I'm glad that uh, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle saw it that way and acted accordingly. All right, Congressman, a big here here on, on Russia, also on the debt ceiling. I mean, how many times can you keep raising the debt ceiling? We're up to $20 trillion right now. At some point, you have to get a trade-off for it or else... You're putting it all on the next generation, and you're right. Medicare's going bankrupt. Medicaid's going bankrupt. Social Security and time will go bankrupt. We've got to get serious about this $20 trillion debt. Couldn't agree more. And, uh, you know, I will point out, we did bring the deficit down. Uh, when, the, when the Republican majority came in, it was $1.4 trillion. It's now down to less than $600 billion, but that's an extraordinary amount of money. So we've still made, we've made progress on the deficit front. Uh, I just, I don't want to lose the progress that we've made, quite frankly, and I think there's a risk that we'll do that going forward between tax cuts and, and the need for uh, more spending on defense. So, uh, you know, you got to get yep. tough on some of these other areas. You're right. And, and, and all the trend lines moving forward over the next few decades are bad. And it's younger Americans who will pay the most. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Greatly appreciate it. Still ahead. Pre President Trump.